hello everyone. Thank you very much for attending this uh, plenary session. It's uh, really nice to see uh, so many people. Uh, my name is Yasin Ibrahim. I'm an assistant professor at the International Water Institute of Mohammed VI Polytechnic University in Morocco. And I am the moderator of this plenary session about high and low latitude climate interactions at multiple timescales. It is with my it is with pleasure that I present our speaker, Professor Hai Cheng from the School of Human Settlement in Civil Engineering at Xi'an Jiaotong University uh, in China, in Xi'an, in China. I have been personally collaborating with him for the last seven, seven years, and uh, I even did a postdoc of three years in his laboratory. Um, Hai Cheng has been uh, a professor uh, at the Xi'an Jiaotong University since 2010. He received his PhD in geochemistry in 1988 from Nanjing University in China. He joined the Institute of Geology at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in 1988, and he was appointed uh, a senior research, a senior research scientist at the University of Minnesota from 1993 to 2010. Uh, Professor Cheng has received many honors and awards, uh, including an appointment as a geochemical fellow of the Geochemical Society and the European Association of Geochemistry in 2015. He was nominated an EGU uh, fellow in 2017, and he was the EGU Emiliani lecturer in 2019. Professor Cheng has been at the leading edge in developing uranium series dating techniques, and he provided plenty of uranium thorium dates for collaborators, including me, and he helped to make many discoveries about climate change worldwide. He played a world leading role in climate studies of global spiritems, including uh, the long East Asian monsoon record that spans 640,000 years, uh, the Indian, the longest Indian monsoon record, which spans 280,000 years, and the longest westerly climate records from Central Asia, which cover 500,000 years, and um, from North America, which covered 335,000 years, and the longest record from the Amazon basin, which covered, covers 250,000 years. Uh, Professor Cheng, uh, you're welcome, and thank you for giving us uh, this talk. And uh, you can start your presentation now, please. Okay. Yasin, can you see it, my yes. screen? Yes, I can see it perfectly. Okay. Okay. Hi, Yashin. First, I would like to thank you for your introduction. I would also like to thank the organizer for giving me this great opportunity to share some of our research results. Good morning, everyone. My topic is high and low latitude climate uh, interactions on multiple time scales. However, due to the time limit, I probably just can cover the millennial scale events occurred during the last glacier and the deglacial period. First of all, I would like to introduce some of advantages of the splicism record, particularly splicism delta weighting record. As you know, probably limestones cover about 15% of the continental surfaces and uh, Almost all climate systems have caves, and thus we can potentially establish various spilism records. Here, the blue dot uh, show the cave site where spilism records are more or less available. In the past about 20 years, cave data weighting records have covered all, most of the terrestrial regions becoming an important complement to marine and ice core records globally. Another advantage is that the species record generally can be precisely dated by
by uranium and the thorium method. This slide shows the uranium thorium dating development from the 1980s to present. The most significant improvement in instrumentations lies in the uranium thorium ionization efficiency, which almost, uh, which always uh, allows better dating precision and the smaller sample size. Here, I would like to show you an example of a new generation specimen record from Cherry Puji Cave from the Northeast India, which is characterized by it is precise uranium thorium dates due to high uranium content, high resolution due to fairly high growth rate, and the precise relative ages due to it is a clearly defined annual bands. Importantly, these features of new generation records allow us to establish precise correlations between different climate records from various climate system globally. The bottom show the clear bending uh, on the confocal microscope. So another uh, advantage is the reliability. So this is uh, because we can do replication tests with the samples, uh, uh, different split some samples from uh, same or different cases. This figure show the uh, replications of millennial scale events in Hulu, Dongge, and the Yongqing cave delta waiting record from uh, Asian monsoon domain. These three caves are about 900 kilometers, kilometers away from each other with very different cave settings, such as vegetation at all, at the central. However, their millennial scale variability you can see is identical. The second subtopic of my talk is about the Younger Dryas event as an example. Because the Younger Dryas is the most recent typical millennial scale event, and therefore it is absolutely age uncertainty would be smaller, provided the relative age error are the same. We first used a key sample from uh, ANA collected from uh, Spain in the North Atlantic domain which has a delta weighting pattern very similar or identical to Greenland ice core record across the Young Dries uh, uh, event. We dated this sample extensively and obtained a precise chronology with a typical uncertainty of 20 to 30 years. This result not only confirms the Greenland ice core IGCC05 chronology at a sub-centennial precision, but also provide a direct correlation with low latitude monsoon records without any systematic age uncertainties because all records are now dated with the same uranium thorium systematics eventually. This is the uh, uh, chronology or age model. This is a comparison between Greenland record, which is uh, uh, a blue color curves, and uh, the gray curve is the split uh, record from uh, uh, Spain. The left diagram of this slide show a set of high precision split younger dry records, and they are correlations with the Greenland ice core delta weighting at the top and the calcium record at the bottom that are now well established by the Spanish uh, spilism record in terms of their absolute ages. In this record, the Younger Dry started at 12,870 years BP and terminated at 
11,700 years BP. More importantly, this record allow us to establish a robust correlation strategy between the Asian monsoon and the Greenland record in subcentennial pre, uh, precision. The, the, that, that is the use of break point or initial change point like this, instead of the conventional middle point correlation. In this paper uh, published two years ago, based on our relation, uh, correlation strategy, a number of high resolution records from a different client system were correlated on the same spacetime time scale, including polar ice core record and the low latitude monsoon record, which in turn revealed the climate dynamics underlying the Younger Dry event. We found that while the Younger Dry onset is synchronous between high and the low latitude, the Younger Dry termination occurred significantly earlier in tropics, such as in Borneo and Sumatra in the West Pacific. The right schematic uh, diagram that uh, depicts the uh, relationship, the correlation. In addition, it appears that the tropical Pacific shifted toward a more La Nina like state before the end of the Younger Dries. In Antarctica, the change in the WBC data weighting record, for example, around the onset of the Younger Dries lacks Greenland by about 100 years. But the termination shift in the same record seems to lead not lag Greenland as well as a Mason by 200 years. The right schematic diagram indicates this temporal relationship. In the conventional concept, the millennial events, including Younger Dries, were largely controlled by changes in the North Atlantic. In other words, climate change always started from the North high latitudes and the, the low latitude and Antarctic climate variations are nothing but a passive response to the high latitude changes. This is the current mainstream idea. However, our results suggest that the Antarctic and the tropics may play a more active role, at least during the termination process of the millennial event. In other words, it seems that the di uh, dynamics of millennial scale event are similar to the operation of a spring. While the initial forcing resides in the North Atlantic triggered the event, the Antarctic and the tropical rebounds may be critical to the termination of the event, just like the rebound of this uh, Spring. Now I'm going to talk about another example of a millennial event, the Henry G. Stadium 4. In this paper published last year, we had a close look at the Henry G. Stadium 4. In our new record, the event started at 41,020 years BP and terminated at 38, 340 years BP. The age uncertainties are rather small, about 50 years. Again, based on our correlation strategy, a set of high resolution records from 
different uh, climate systems will correlate on the same time scale, the Sibelism time scale, including polar ice core record and the low latitude monsoon record. This allow us to better understand the dynamic of this event. Of note are the different patterns of the Antarctic ice core delta weighting and the DLN records associated with Heinrich Stadium 4. Particularly, the EDML ice core record at the Atlantic sector show a much earlier change before the termination of Heinrich Stadium 4 at Greenland, suggesting a temperature decrease and the southward shift of southern westerly wind and the subtropical front occurred near the Atlantic sector of Antarctica because before the Greenland termination. This early shift may be precursors of the termination of Heinrich's debut four at Greenland. Another key observation about the Heinrich State of Four is that the termination of the South American monsoon started also earlier, indicated by vertical orange this, uh, and the red this arrows, than Asian monsoon indicated by this uh, green vertical arrow. By a few hundred years, in other words, the South American monsoon termination already finished at the time when the Asian monsoon and the Greenland termination processes just started. These two figures also show the temporal relationship between Asian and the South American monsoon across the Heinrich State of Four. The left figure, this figure, show the uh, state, uh, Heinrich State of Four onset and the termination time in Asian monsoon record, this vertical bar. And, and the, the right figure shows the Heinrich State of Four onset and the termination in South American uh, monsoon record, this two not this line and this bar. So that uh, importantly, our dating results are now precisely enough to resolve the timing difference at the termination process. That is uh, South American monsoon, this uh, vertical dash line leads the Asian monsoon or Greenland by a few hundred years, these three bars. A model study by Baker et al. 2017 found that the bipolar seesaw mechanism could also operate in a south to north directionality. This result may suggest that the Antarctic cooling could potentially trigger the uh, termination of millennial events in the North Atlantic region. This is consistent with our observation that the Antarctic temperature change at the Atlantic sector leads the Greenland warming, suggest a more active role of Antarctica at the termination of a millennial event. Another important factor is that the Amazon River is largest river by discharge volume of water in the world, which is equivalent to about 17% of the world river discharge into the oceans. It generates a large Amazon plume region over the uh, top Atlantic Ocean which will presumably affect the great ocean conveyor. 
Indeed, modeling results also show that the amount of discharge of Amazon River indeed can significantly affect the Atlantic meridian overturning circulation, the AMOC, that is stronger AMOC occur when South American monsoon weakened. And the, therefore, the Amazon plume region become smaller and vice versa. This point. Another possible termination precursor would be the southward shift of the southern westerly wind and the subtropical front inferred from the Antarctic ice core record. If indeed it will increase has leakage, the arc has a leakage in this part area, uh, which will also result in a stronger ammo, therefore leading to the termination possibly of the millennial event. Regarding the trigger of a millennial events, I would like to mention a spectral analysis result of the millennial scale climate variations, which show dominant precession and obliquity cycles. This is a millennial scale climate variations. This is a spectral analysis. You, you can see the, the uh, uh, dominant precession and the obliquity uh, uh, cycles. Therefore, it appears that the summer insulation changes over the northern high latitude may be an important external trigger of the biennial scale events in general. The last thing I would like to mention here is the chronology improvement by Spinism record. Additional to Younger Dries and Henry Chi Stadium 4 mentioned above, a series of work has also been carried out to precisely date a set of millennial events across the past 60,000 years leading to a much improved chronology covering this time period. This, those are so-called golden spikes. The uh, uh, age uncertainty is under 100 years so now. Overall, both Greenland ice core and the Spilism chronology over the past 60,000 years are consistent within their quoted uncertainties. However, absolute age uncertainties or age bias of spilism chronology are much smaller than the Greenland ice core. That's about uh, one order of a magnitude smaller. So this uh, is the uh, uncertainty of uh, IGCC 05. This, uh, error bar is the splissima uh, chronology uncertainty. So the apparent offset of the uh, Greenland chronology from uh, splissima chronology comes mainly from the LGM, last glacial maximum period, or between 18 and uh, 23,000 years BP. It is, seems that some of the thin band, very thin band in Greenland ice core in this time period, I, I mean in LGM, which were not counted previously as any band may need to be reconsidered. Actually, it is reconsidered now by ice core community as I heard. So the main offset is uh, around this area probably there are some band not be counted. Now it should be put that back into the, uh, the, uh, the, the chronology. Okay. Uh, sorry, I... Cheng, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you, but we only have three minutes left. Oh and, yeah, uh, uh, I, I will to... finish within three minutes. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. And Thank I just you. Want to you tell, remind me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I uh, just want to tell the attendees that they can. No they, problem. They are welcome yeah. to write questions and yeah. Yeah. Understand. Thanks. Uh, our new study found that across the Heritage State One, just after the LGN, the Greenland ice core record has no significant age or visible age offset from species chronology based on the comparison between Greenland calcium and Chinese species delta weighting record. The blue curve is a Greenland delta weighting record. The brown uh, curve is a Greenland calcium record. The two green records uh, are from uh, uh, Zhangjia and the Hulu Caves in China. There are no visible age offset among these records. However, uh, during the, uh, uh, around the Heritage Stadium 2, we found that uh, there is some significant offset. These figures show the uh, correlation between uh, Greenland ice core calcium record and uh, uh, the Indian Spiritism Delta weighting record around Heritage Stadium 2 before the LGM. To match these two type of record, the Greenland ice core age, IGCC05, I mean, needs to shift to old side by 320 years, around the 23 to 27 KABP. This observation, together with the aforementioned comparison between Heritage Stadium 1 records, suggests that the major ice core age counting bias about 300 years occurred between Heinrich Stadium 1 and 2. That's LGM time period. Okay, here is a summary of the new correlation of the Greenland record, the blue lines with Asian monsoon, methane, South American monsoon, and the temperature change over the Atlantic sector of Antarctica. The right figure show new angry method and the Antarctic weights record on the Chinese specimen chronology over the past 60,000 years at subcentennial temporal precision. Okay, here I'll just let you have a quick look at this is the new generation of Chinese composite record. Uh, we're going to write up this uh, paper this year. We uh, constructed from new Hulu, Donggu, and Wulu cave record from China. This uh, record has much high resolution and more precise age controls than all previous records, which will provide a set of age benchmarks for correlating and calibrating climate vari variability over the past 60,000 years. Okay, here is the brief uh, summary. The trigger of the millennial scale events appears to reside in north high latitudes and then propagate southward to tropical monsoon regimes and Antarctica through fast atmospheric and slow oceanic processes. The polar world shift of the southwest, uh, southern west wind belt, large reducing of the Amazon River discharge, as well as a low latitude hydroclimate rebound, are possible precursors of the termination of the millennial events. Precisely dated splitism record indeed provide a set of age benchmarks for correlating and the calibrating climate variability over the past 60,000 years. Okay, thank you for your time. That's all my talk. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation, Professor Ching. Uh, now I ask the attendees if they have any questions. I can see that one of the attendees raised their hands. Uh, Please write your questions. If you, there is one question uh, about how much would Amazon discharge uh, 
have to decrease to influence the EMOC. Okay. Uh, this, uh, there is a, uh, um, see, there is, uh, I, I cited that um, in that slide. So, sorry, it's a, a, a difficult to take it back. But the, the 2020, there is a modeling uh, work. They think there, if the double or the uh, reduce half of the, uh, the ammo, uh, Amazon discharge will to, uh, they have a very significant effect on the ammo, uh, in, in the, uh, the state of the ammo. So, but by the, the uh, uh, our record, it, which is possible because uh, during the uh, energy event, uh, these uh, kind of colder event in the Northern hemisphere, Southern hemisphere will be uh, really wet, much wet. Then the plume will be assumed to be much larger than present. So that will be a significant uh, amount of increase, but uh, it's not necessary to be a linear correlation, but uh, this is uh, basically mo modeling. Uh, 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 and uh, we, in observation, we see the big difference in terms of uh, Amazon and the South American monsoon. And the, uh, the modeling showed the uh, this charge change will affect the ammo. Okay, that's hopefully I, I explained this uh, clear <laughs> enough. Um, to uh, uh, Matt, Matt's co sorry if I'm raising your name, uh, the person who raised their, their hand, you, you are allowed to speak now. You can unmute, unmute yourself and you are allowed to speak. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I raised my hand by, by mistake, sorry. Okay, <laughs> that's not a problem. Okay, I thought you had a question. So uh, if there are any other questions, please, the attendees, you can write your questions and I can make sure to read them to Professor Chen. Okay, so I think there, are, there we don't have any more. Maybe I have one question yeah. actually. Uh, it's not about millennial, millennial events, but since you talked in the beginning of your presentation about the younger Prius, um, I'm just, I was just wondering about the 8.2 event. I know that it's not considered a millennial event, but uh, regarding the, the, the impact of the 8.2 event, do you see some similarities? I mean, in the, the scale, I mean, I know that it's a large scale event, but is it like similar to the Younger Dryas or what do you have any input or thoughts about? That's a very good question, but uh, it's <laughs> difficult to uh, answer though. But the 8.2K event uh, in terms of the interhemisphere anti-phase, those uh, kind of uh, features are similar to, or, or even the trigger, but it's similar to to the uh, glacial or the glaciation uh, millennial scale event, but it happened at the uh, Holocene during the Holocene, middle Holocene, or between early and the uh, uh, middle Holocene. The, the, these boundary conditions are quite different. Uh, the first part of the the trigger, the, I think, it's a can be explained with the same mechanism as I explained for the millennial scale event. But this, the, the end is very tricky, but the Greenland, the feature is not as same as the, what we observed in Southern Hemisphere. So there are some things come from Southern Hemisphere during the, uh, the later half of the event. So that's something need to be further investigated. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so there is there is one more uh, question from Nikita, uh, Nikita Kaushal. Uh, thank you, Professor Cheng. That was great. The oxygen isotope anomalies are uh, are uh, really distinct in the records. How confident are we of their interpretations in the different regional contexts? Uh, for example, what is the, uh, the the Heinrich event in the East Asian summer monsoon or the Indian summer monsoon? What does the anomaly mean? 
what does the magnitude in anomaly uh, change mean to compare one hundred against another? Uh, any suggestions for improving this? Thank you, Nikita, for this interesting okay. question. Uh, if uh, I understand right, the question is about the uh, interpretation of the this specimen record in terms of data weighting interpretations. This is a uh, ongoing uh, disputing issue, but uh, in, it, it's not uh, the, the amount of of precipitation in uh, East Asian monsoon region or Indian monsoon region. And that not that simple, but it is an integrated uh, effect uh, of the uh, 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 this uh, circulation and the, the uh, moisture source and, and this kind of, uh, those two things, I think it's the most, most uh, important uh, uh, factor that uh, it, Confirming the final what we observe the values, but in South America, uh, in Amazon, those area, it was uh, int uh, always interpreted as the uh, pre uh, precipitating amount effect. But recently, there is a uh, uh, I think it's a modeling paper show some portion, most portion probably this interpretation is still. Hold, but some pre, uh, area might not. But overall, this integrated uh, precipitation or um, the circulation scale will determine the final data weighting of the precipitation, which is uh, recorded by Spitzman. Any more questions? Okay, well, thank you. There's a, another question. Thank oh. you, Professor Cheng. Nice talk. I am Ming Chiang Liang. Uh, a small question. You, you introduced an underlying climate uh, dynamics during the Young Dryas H4 events. How about other H Heinrich events? Is it same? It, it, it's as same as Young Dryas in Heinrich 4? Thank you very much. Uh, very good questions. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, we uh, I, I use Young Dryas and Heinrich IV as uh, examples, but actually I mentioned that we already finished all the, uh, for example, uh, most of uh, the uh, very uh, uh, typical uh, this uh, kind of uh, millennial scale events, including all the uh, Heinrich events that lasted for uh, six, six energy events from one to six. So uh, to me, everything looks uh, similar, like H5, H3, but uh, a trigger would be uh, the uh, H1 and the H2. And in these two, uh, you cannot see clear data weighting features in, in Greenland record. Uh, therefore, we use the uh, uh, data, uh, no, calcium uh, content uh, to correlate because there is no feature uh, uh, for H1 and H2 uh, in uh, Greenland data weighting record. Therefore, we use the, the uh, just new strategy. This, uh, uh, because of the LGM, there is a modeling work of Herb at all uh, last year, science advanced paper and show that the data weighting uh, was muted because the winter signal was not recorded because of CI's coverage. Therefore, data weighting was not really clear in Greenland, but the data, uh, the calcium content, which is uh, linked to Westerly, uh, Westerly uh, is uh, coupled with uh, Asian monsoon. Therefore, we can still can make the correlation. So overall, I would say, the mechanism we found that they are consistent for all these uh, major events. Well, th thank you very much, Professor Cheng, for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation and uh, interesting discussion. I wish we had more time to continue, but we're already 12 minutes. Uh, okay. Thank you, Yaki. <laughs> so we need to close the session. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone, you. for attending, and special thanks to Professor Cheng and see you later at the OSM. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.